welcome to the Law of Positivism podcast. I'm your host, Shireen, and I'm the creator of Law of Positivism. I'm here to help you on your spiritual and healing journey. I am a certified yoga and meditation teacher, a student of Chinese medicine, a doula, a Reiki practitioner, and a passionate, highly sensitive person. I want to use my knowledge to channel information and messages for you to grow on all levels. Hi, and welcome to the 15th episode of the podcast. I'm very grateful that you're here. I know it's been a very intense week since the eclipse that we had this weekend, and I know that many of you have been feeling it mentally, emotionally, energetically and also physically in your body so many of us have felt maybe physically sick and uh, also dreams and sleep might have been different so just take it in as a as a download and as a shift that is happening around us and within us and I'm excited about this week's very important topic we're going to talk about climate change and what's happening out there in the world. Um, We're also going to be talking about something called eco-anxiety, which happens to people when they do feel the changes that are happening in, in, in nature. And I have a very special guest on today. She's a dear friend of mine. Her name is Anne, and she is uh, the creator of an group or an organization that is called Be Change, uh, which is a social innovation and education concept that helps people to decrease their climate impact. Uh, She has a bachelor's degree in environmental management and psychology and a master's in sustainability development. And she works as a mental coach in climate psychology and she educates both individuals and organizations to to work and live in a more sustainable way. So we tap into what's happening in Australia since Anne used to live there. And uh, we talk about how different things in our lifestyle can affect the climate, either negatively or positively. And we just talk about what it means to be conscious around nature and the climate. So I really hope that you enjoy this episode and I love to have your feedback and see your reviews so if you do leave a review on iTunes you can take a screenshot and I will do an oracle card reading for you and if you have any questions you can just contact me or Anne after the episode. Hi Anne. Hi Shireen. Hi and welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. Thank you for joining. I'm super excited about our conversation today. And I would love to ask you how you stay mindful and present. Well, I do it in a few different ways. But the main one is that I most morning I uh, I meditate. Mm. And uh, that really helps me to be centered and focused and, and mindful. But I also spend time in nature to recharge and ground myself and be balanced. Mm. Beautiful. And um, I'm really excited to have you here. We've been connected for many years now through just synchronicity that we connected uh, back when I was living in Ireland and you were in Sweden, just got back from your overseas living you were living in australia for a couple of years and we just connected and uh, it's like our journeys have been similar but we've been doing different things so i'm really excited to have you here and i think everyone would love to hear uh, more about you so you can introduce yourself to the listeners um well i'm um I'm very always been very passionate about nature and I grew up in a small village in the northern part of Sweden where I spent uh, pretty much all my 
free time um, with my horse and mm. riding through the forest. And that really, uh, my focus at the time was the horse, but I, I realized later on that, wow, it was also like uh, very special that I, on a daily basis, had this connection with both myself, the horse, and nature, the elements. So I think that really uh, shaped me uh, in how I am and how I think and how I value myself. So um, I studied ecology and psychology uh, and also work with sustainability. And that took me deeper and deeper. I had a lot of climate anxiety mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't cope. I couldn't handle them. So I was deeping deeper and deeper into like climate psychology and mostly for myself to start with so I could cope and actually make a difference. Um, mm. So now I'm working a lot with climate psychology and also ecotherapy. Mm. That's my focus at the moment. That's very interesting. Maybe you can get into that, like the climate psychology, what it is and ecotherapy, like how do you practice that? <clears throat> um, if I start with ego uh, therapy, so mm. that's it's kind of, um, I, I use it all the time myself. As I mentioned before, I go to, into nature and, uh, but I also help other people to, to, while being in nature and ideally in a place in nature that is, hasn't been distracted too much by human activity because those places tend to be more in balance mm. and when we are in places that are more in balance it also affects us more by helping us to be more in balance uh, and by being in these places and using mindfulness techniques at the same time like meditation um, it can really um, help us to feel a deep connection with earth and all the ecosystems and the elements um, and, and the climate and um, and also the way I work is not only to deepen the connection with the planet but also deepen the connection with one yourself mm -hmm. uh, and those two together is um, it makes us uh, not only feel good uh, I mean it's lots of studies showing that <clears throat> spending time in nature is really good for general health and well-being um, but it's also the way I see it is a huge uh, solution going forward, um, creating a sustainable planet. Because today, unfortunately, a lot of people have detached from their connection to, the, to nature mm -hmm. and the planet. And what happens when we have a deep connection to it, naturally, we just don't want to to destroy it or hurt it. Or So it's when we have this connection, we, we tend to be eco-friendly and and want to take care of the ecosystems so mm. it's for me that this is a really important part of going forward that uh, try to um, help people and children to to have this connection mm. and and the disconnect is actually uh, very unnatural but it's uh, conditioning and um, as we say also in Chinese medicine, like the, we are just a microcosm of the macrocosm and we're, we're like what happens in nature is happening within us and what's happening within us is happening in nature. So we, we, are, co we are all coexisting, which is, is maybe hard for us to understand because we've been conditioned differently. And when we realize that we are a part of it, like we, the, every, each individual and each plant and each, everything it goes together in, in a perfect balance, then we understand how much impact we have on everything. And I think it's just going back to the roots to understand that the, the planet is our home and we're here for a reason, but I think the focus have been on other things that that the world has seen as important and mm. we've forgotten the the essentials and we can see that what's happening I don't know if you have 
you you've been following maybe you can you can uh, talk about your time in Australia since a lot is happening there right now maybe you can uh, like how did you it's a very different uh, nature from here and climate but maybe mm. you can just talk about that you mean how how it was for me over there when it was so yes different? and also like connected to what's going on right now down there mm. well it's been like i've been experiencing a lot of pain uh mm. following uh, the development since the fire started in september mm. uh, it's um uh, it's heartbreaking uh, but at the same time uh, for me like if i just think about me you know i i i have to use all the tools that i know in order to manage all these emotions that comes up mm. because when we love something um that's what a lot of people like us we feel a lot of pain when mm. we see destruction of the mm. environment uh, because we feel so much love towards it. So for me, for example, I get so much, mm. I um, really feel like a part of the land and its nature. And um, for me to see the burning and, and uh, knowing how much suffering uh, from the wild animals uh, domestic animals and uh, the trees and and the people it's just like uh, mm. it's very it's very painful and especially also seeing that at the moment there is no um uh, it's very it's lacking uh, understanding from the leadership of the country uh, of of um uh, seeing what is happening and actually doing something about it so but um uh, i i'm hoping uh, i'm holding a vision that it this at least all this destruction will lead to something positive in the end uh, for example that the the government um and also the 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 minds of the people in general will be like awakened mm -hmm. and understanding that nature is part of us and we are part of nature and i mean if you look at how how we are treating nature, mm. there is no wonder things like this happens. Like mm. it's it's a it's a consequence to everything that we do. So it's like cause and effect. You know, we we can't expect doing something like we have been not getting any results. Kind of this is not mm. the results we want, but um, but but it's. You know, it, it, it's not a surprise that this is happening. Uh, mm -hmm. And we need to, that's why I'm, I'm holding a clear vision of this awakening. Uh, and um, I believe we can really shift things around. Mm. And it's not, it's like, uh, there's a lot going on all over the world with, with the climate changes, but it's very apparent mm. now. So before maybe it was, we couldn't see it this obviously, but I think also here in Sweden, we had uh, the cherry blossoms that usually bloom in the springtime has already started a little bit because it's getting warmer even here. It is warmer than usual mm. and we barely had any snow, yeah. which is unusual. So, or at least in Southern parts of Sweden. So I think that uh, like, nature is speaking to us i don't think that the planet itself can renew itself it's done that many times it's we we have to do something also for the uh, survival of humankind if we want it to go that direction but what do you think is is like the main issues right now when it comes to the environment like what is causing this a lot i know you're you're working with this so mm. maybe you can get into that well if we look at just the the climate mm. change then it's we you know we emit too much carbon emissions mm. that makes the weather warmer so and we have a behavior that creates a lot of emissions most of us mm. and we and businesses and governments um as well 
And so we have been doing it basically since, since the Industrial Revolution. Mm. And, and we reached a point now where we see clear changes. Like, for example, I live in the northern part of Sweden, and this is the first time that I can remember that actually in January, mm. I can't even ski outside. Mm. I can see the grass, which, you know, it's unheard of. So, mm. and it's, it's, um, we, for the human psychology, it's, it's, we, it's really hard for us to, to see, to take in that my behavior, my lifestyle, and for a lot of, like, if you, if I think about like my parents' generation and the generation before that, my grandparents, like the industrial revolution and the, the progress was, was such a, a positive thing because quality of life increased and, you know, you could have he better heating at home and you, you know, you didn't have to, to struggle as much. And so mm. it was something very positive. And then to, to take in and realize that this also have some negative consequences. Mm. And so we, we want to, it's very easy to go into denial in, in this whole, um, in this whole area. And, and mm. that's, I think, is why it's taken so long for us to do something. And this, has, this is both when it comes to us personally, but also uh, businesses and governments. Um, so that's what I focus on the work with the human psychology to help us be able to actually look at this, these issues in a way that doesn't create blame or shame or guilt or just like, like more as a matter of fact, okay, have a look. What does my lifestyle look like? What kind of emission does it create? And how far off am I to living a sustainable life uh, mm. that we can actually continue to live on this planet? And, um, there's a lot of climate calculators out there and they are not exact, but they give you a rough indication and they can really show you where your big emissions are. Um, and, and people also want, it's for, for a lot of people, it's really hard also to look at this because they feel threatened. They feel like, oh, if I'm going to live a sustainable life, my life's going to be boring and I have to, mm. you know, stop doing things that I love. Mm. But it's not like that, actually. Um, in my work with Be Change, um, we we shown that by focusing on um, taking one step at a time, focusing focusing on the right things, and including quality of life in all the changes that you do, you can actually have a better life than you had before while you're living in balance with the ecosystems and the climate. So, so, and, but people doesn't know that. So when people in like on Facebook see things, they don't, they just scroll past it. Mm. They don't want to, because they, there's so many triggers connected to this. Mm. That's true. And, and you mentioned be change. Maybe you want to get into that and the work that you're doing there and yeah, just talk a little bit about that. Um, Yes, it was a few years ago. So I was working with uh, climate anxiety, like um, almost similar to sports psychology, but like mm -hmm. how do you, how can you train your mind to top perform in in um, living in sustainable life? But I was, this was such a new area, and people and my clients had trouble really understanding what does my thoughts and emotion has to do with how I'm able to live a sustainable life. Like they couldn't really get a connection. And then I met is, uh, this woman, Stina Sundqvist, mm. uh, that lives in the same town as I do. Mm. And she was coaching people to reduce their carbon emissions. And she had trouble keeping up people's motivations and uh, not falling back to old habits and all that. So when we were talking to each other, it was like, but what happens if we combine um, our uh, methods to, mm. to one method? And uh, so we put the, both then the inner work and the outer work into one uh, methodology that is called now Be Change. Mm. Um, that we work uh, then both with the human psychology and also being very practical and real. Mm. Um, and that it has proven very effective, uh, like on average, uh, our participants and almost half the carbon emissions in, in only three and a half months. 
and and their and their changes remains afterwards as well. And while they also feel like uh, their quality of life has improved, uh, there's about eighty percent of participants, and twenty percent feels like it's the same, and they feel more hopeful about the future. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's really fantastic to 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 know and to work with people and see the changes they they are able to do. Um, because when we, um, it's, it's, some, it's a, like a psychological concept called cognitive dissonance. Mm. And it's when, when how we, our, every, each person has values, uh, mm. in their values. And when the gap between our values and how we actually live in the world becomes too big, mm. uh, then we feel this, um, cognitive dissonance and it, it's it's really not feeling good it's 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 like a it's un, a very uncomfortable feeling inside because you're not feeling like i'm living an authentic life mm. so in, in be change we really help people to to get that gap much shorter much smaller and what what I see at the end of a course is kind of a glitter in the eyes of the participants. Mm. And that's that kind of feeling that I am able to be authentic. Um, mm. And that's, for me, that's one of the most satisfying parts. Also, of course, knowing that we living more in balance um, with the planet. And, and that's, of course, is the, the main one. Mm. That's beautiful, and mm. and uh, what when you when you are teaching or having classes or coaching, how what are the practical things that if you would advise people like how to take some? Because I think, as you said, many people don't think that it, it's so big, so it's hard mm. to know like where can I start. We start by small things, but maybe you can. Uh, give some advice that you think is important because we we uh, the listeners are also from different parts of the world so mm. maybe the way we live in Sweden is not exactly the way people live in the US or in other countries but what what are the fundamental things they are as you said they they different from different countries but also from person to person like we can see in our swedish participants for a lot of them it's the biggest emissions are around travel mm. uh, but the best thing is to go find a climate calculator in your country um mm. and and do do like a weigh in of carbon emissions because then you get like a an indication what it looks like for you right now Mm. And that's a really good starting point just to get aware of what does my lifestyle look like right now. Mm. Um, that's really good. And um, But also, I just want to mention about, I think a lot of people at the moment also feeling a lot of worry, mm. like climate worry and, and, and eco worry. And that can, as the first wave of worry that we get, like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And what, how, how, what's going to happen with my children, my grandchildren? Are they going to live on this planet? Blah blah blah. You know, mm-hmm. when they get that first kind of awareness that um, what's going on now is not, it's not okay, it's not in balance. And that first way is very good. It's very healthy worry because it just makes us aware that mm-hmm. something is not right. We have a problem. Uh, and because we get aware of that, we can also do something about it. Mm. Uh, the, when worry and anxiety becomes negative is when we get stuck in the worry. Mm. And it's very easy today with social media to, in our feed, maybe it just comes all the time, like this disaster and this disaster, and it just doesn't stop. And, mm. and it's very negative for our mind. Uh, and our ability to actually do something. So, so, um, so my uh, um, my suggestion is to for for those listeners who f- feel like they're stuck in this kind of ego anxiety and worry is to mm-hmm. try to 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 think, yes, 
this worry is good when mm. I got it the first time. Mm. Uh, but now I'm going to focus on the way forward. Mm. Because by just worrying or reading more and more about the causes and the effects, you know, you know we, none of us need to be expert in climate change. You know, that we, we know enough. If we know about carbon dioxide um, increasing and, and, and roughly where the emissions come from, that's, that's enough for, for, for an, a normal person. Mm. But the most important thing is to look at the way forward. What can I do? To, 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 to create a solution, to get us out of that. And then the main f- focus and where we put the most of our time should be there, creating that way forward. Mm. That's the only way, like Greta said, like mm. the house is on fire. Mm. So if the house is on fire, it doesn't matter how long you sit and analyze, oh, the house is on fire. Mm. Why was it on fire? Blah, mm. blah, blah. We need to go there and put the fire out mm. to solve it. And then we have to repair the mm. house that got damaged so that's pretty much uh, a, a very effective and very simple way to to deal with it so for example with the bushfires in australia mm. you can also not only do something in your own lifestyle but then you could think okay maybe i want to donate to some cause that i believe in or some organization that's doing something or i want to there's a few um, ways you can contact the government to have your say or doing something that resonates with your heart because then you also, you know, you know that you have done what you can, for example, if you talk about Australia, mm. uh, and then you can kind of leave it mm. for that time being. Then you don't have to read about the bushfires every day or all the animals because you, you've done the assessment, you've done what you can uh, for now. And then maybe two months later, you can come back to it and see, okay, read up on it. What has happened? Can I do anything more? Um, but it's but it's not like we all uh, should or need to like support Australia. I think we should really follow uh, our hearts and where we are drawn, mm. uh, because we're not meant to that every single one of us are involved every way. Like you know, we have a con- we have connections, we have callings, and we should trust them. Yes, and and the fires have been in many places in the world and uh, the Australian one has been very big and also <clears throat> very talked about in media. So the awareness mm. is there, but it it's not really like when we make a change, we make a change for the whole world. So we're not just making mm. a change that impacts one country. It makes a change for all of the world. And even if we're kind of, feeling safe up here in the north right now Mm. because Mm. we don't have that type of heat but uh, it still affects our climate so I think uh, there is a positive wave now uh, a positive um, I think the 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 conversation is so open now as well we we didn't talk about these things as much maybe 10-15 years ago as we do now um, yeah. And it's because it went so far and um, uh, highly sensitive people are uh, and empaths are feeling what the earth is going through and uh, mm. what animals are. We're connected in different ways. So we're extra sensitive. Um, and um, I think maybe we can also tap into like the positive um we can see some positive waves now that probably are making impacts on the emissions and everything. What do you see has been like the couple of just these past years, positive changes that we made as individuals? Yeah, there is, there is a lot. I mean, just in Sweden, you can see a lot of people are, when they can, they choose to travel by train, for example, mm-hmm. and so much more people are eating vegetarian food. Mm. And like I've been a vegetarian for like 20 years. And, mm. you know, at, in the beginning, if someone was going to invite me for dinner, it was a huge deal. Mm. You know, people was like stressed out and stuff. And now it's just, it's normal. It's mm. no problem. Like, and it's coming <laughs> over. It's not, not a big deal. It's, mm. it's, it's major things have changed. And, um, so it's, but, as you said also, like, 
the mind of people, the awareness has changed a lot. Mm. And, um, and I think at the end of the day, when we feel really overwhelmed, uh, we can we can come back to that li- that our own microcosmos, as you were talking about before, mm-hmm. that and also be changed is is inspired by be the change you want to see in the world. So by just being yourself and and doing your practice to be a loving person, uh, compassionate and kind, and and working through your own stuff. And raising your awareness and raising your your um, vibration, mm. by doing that, you are changing the world mm. because you are influencing everything around you, like little waves that comes out of you. And we all have different paths. Like some people, yes, we are supposed to be on big uh, stages and talks and whatever. But some of us, we make huge change of just being who we are and taking that personal responsibility. You know, when I feel, when I'm having a negative feeling that I own it, you know, instead of just putting it out there over other people, there's a little thing like that mm. uh, to, to work on your own personal development, to be the change you want to see in the world. So uh, for, for example, you and I, Shireen, we want to see a world where people are, uh, love based and kind and compassionate and we mm. live in harmony with ourselves and each other and the animals and the trees and it's beautiful you know mm. and so in order for us to be that change you want to see in the world uh, it's important to really work on that within ourselves within my mind within my heart within my body to be in balance even just to even try to be in balance in, with our, in, within our body uh, is, as I see it, creating positive change also for the planet and the environment. Uh, for example, myself, when I started, to, uh, when I was, had my peak of eco-anxiety and worry, I was the opposite, you know. I was angry. I was frustrated. I was, like, thinking so much, swa- uh, like, black and white thoughts, like, oh, it's that company's fault is that government's fault and this person is bad and i was like i was not the change i wanted to see in the world Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was not nice for me it was not nice for uh, the people around me and uh, luckily i realized that this was not an effective way of uh, working for the planet that is my you know my my calling Uh, Mm -hmm. so i could i could change i could switch over Mm. 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 yeah and when we harbor when we harbor uh, emotions like anger or fear it comes from a source within us so we need Mm. to know what we need to work with ourselves and it's Mm. healthy to have different types of, of emotions and understanding them and Again, a Chinese medicine example, like we, we, it's mm. healthy to feel all emotions, and, but it's not healthy to have exaggerated emotions because it does affect our uh, microcosm, like our organs and, and the way we function, our health. And that, that vibration we set out that does change the shape and form of everything around us and in the world. So I think what, what is happening now and i see it so clearly also within our mm. spiritual communities a lot of mm. meditations gatherings and uh, dedication to mother earth and i think in all of our practices most of us we work with with the earth and i i had a very profound uh, experience one night where i did feel uh, or did get messages also from the animal world and they are highly in tuned with everything and nature is their home like we have kind of built a society where we can protect ourselves from what's happening in nature but the animals mm-hmm. can't mm-hmm. like they cannot put out the fires and they can't um uh, like it's hard for them to to survive natural disasters 
and uh, mm-hmm. I think that's important to know. And also that uh, w- nature and the earth will persist. It, it will not, <laughs> like earth will not uh, explode, even though if all, all countries will lie underneath water the earth is still existing we won't exist but the earth will exist so it's just how we work with earth and how we work with yeah as you said uh, sometimes we focus a lot on our own development which is good but we also have to understand that it's it's we need to have all the parts there when we practice yoga and mm. um, we practice non-violence and that's violence towards ourselves and others, but also animals, plants, everything. And to see everything that it's a living thing, like earth yeah. is living. It's not a mm. dead matter. And we are made from the matter of earth. We are not made from, we can say that our soul is maybe stardust, but our physical body mm. is made from this. So we're just vibing and flowing together all the time. So there is a misconception and separation. When separation exists, there will be more destruction between humans, between humans and earth and animals. And and it's come to an extreme because after the industrialization, <clears throat> we overconsume also. It's a consumerism and we are consuming everything. And we... It, before maybe it was like a black hole we don't know where it comes from but now we know and we know mm. the source of things so if we have knowledge we can make positive changes and I think <clears throat> there there can be we, we don't have to feel like we're giving up everything but sometimes we have to think from our heart and not from our ego like no I want to keep on doing this or that in my life because it makes me happy or it makes me satisfied like sometimes even with what we eat like even in in yoga we talk about uh, foods that raise our vibration and Mm. um, it's not what what sometimes our ego wants but we we need to see that because of how we consume and how everything is easily and readily available for us. Mm. We are actually uh, consuming things that are not good for us. So it's when we, <clears throat> if we want to live a holistic life where we, everything is aligned, we need to know that we are what we give ourselves is also what is benefiting us, our body, our mind, our soul, but also things around us. So we can't mm. be, I think it, it, it is an ego thing. And I think there needs to be, yeah, I think people are pioneering now and Greta has been very loud and clear with what how sh- she sees the world and, and uh, the climate where it's going. Mm. So that's really important that people are, open and and uh, f- fighting for the change as well because mm-hmm. it's it's it, i think it's really hard to i think everyone can be conscious and aware but there's also societies where the the living standard is and the the poverty mm-hmm. is making it impossible to live a sustainable life so here in Sweden, we can make certain changes and uh, is, we're still w- consuming a lot, but we can make some changes. But then there are people and countries that I think it's it's even harder for them to, because the system it, is built like that. So there's a structural structure, structure that needs to change. And and uh, that com- that is actually with having mindful leaders in the world, and we we're moving away from the old paradigm. But it 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 will take time. We have to just be patient. Like one day people will look back and think that this is ridiculous, like how we mm. how we lived, and and we already can see like the past decades how how crazy it's been. Mm. Yeah, and I exactly, and I think 
for each and every one of us is like to 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 just remind ourselves that it's not meant that we're all going to live the same way like mm. Greta she's living she's living a life true to her values mm. so for each and every one of us to to look at what is my true values and then look at the lifestyle and see what is actually meaningful for me because it's like a lot of things is just habits mm. like you're talking about ego and that's i think also connecting to the psychology of that we are creatures of mm. habits mm. and breaking habit i mean we can have the information and the knowledge that something is uh, good or bad for us but then to actually change the habits is, is, is a huge one just the way human beings in the physical body are you know are how it's set up mm. so and that's also, I think, what makes we change so effective because we really help people breaking the habits in a very gentle way, you know, mm. that it's... And that's also when we are heart-centered and centered to my own values and in my, from my heart, you know, for real, what is meaningful. Mm. Um, and then make our lifestyle changes based on that. Then we don't feel like we have lost anything mm. uh, because you might even have more meaning because mm. you have reassessed your values. Mm. So, so that's, and from that, even though we can't change over a day uh, or a night to, to live in perfect authenticity, as with yoga practice, we do a little <laughs> bit uh, every day. Mm. And we're having a vision of where we want to be. Mm. And that way, I think we can really shift the more people on the planet that work in this conscious way towards not only a sustainable life but a sustainable planet mm. we will get there quite fast i think and and that's this is also what i i see a lot like that some people they really focus so much on the physical like how much emission is this and how much emission is that and like the the, the real physical one and they forget and they get might get stuck in anger resentment bitterness and uh, and then we have the other side um, that gets get focused so much on the inner, like on the personal development and meditation mm. uh, and things like that, and and forget about the physical mm. a little bit. Mm. That it's it's all great to do personal development, mm. but when we combine the two, uh, then it's it's really becomes it's it's it goes fast and these big changes because i think that's um we are physical beings on this planet like we have human bodies and our actions create other physical changes and effects on on the environment that we live on this planet as well as that we are um beings of like having hearts or souls or how, whatever you want to describe it we all have different ways of describing all of that but we have that too and mm. i think a key is to try to combine them yeah. and that is not so easy but i think you really to try not to but you tend to <laughs> you tend to get stuck mm. on one or the other and then try to be noticed okay which one am i most in and then try to go to meet up with the other mm. aspect of it yeah because they are so important both of them are so important yeah definitely mm. yeah, it's a balance and mm. and i mean if you start one one place it will automatically lead you to another place it's like they everything goes together it's just awareness and consciousness and that's just uh, starting with the awareness and talking about, I mean, you work with clients, you work with businesses, with cities, like bigger groups also. So the impact becomes bigger and bigger. Also, mm -hmm. uh, just planting some small seeds here and there. It, it makes a difference. And I think, yeah, we can all become like examples and, and, and inspire other people with small things so mm. <clears throat> we all have that power we don't have to feel powerless in any way exactly and that's when i when i looked into research also mm. like about this thing that we make the biggest change uh, um, that we like how we inspire others mm. 
it's not what we write it's not you know what we um, even what we say or anything it's what we do mm. so people get inspired by how we are mm. so for example um, when we manage to live a sustainable lifestyle that also very happy and meaningful mm. um, and I'm a contented and balanced person when people see that they get inspired and go oh my god it's possible mm. I also want that and they might they're probably not even going to say anything mm. but just by being an example um, and just being we don't have to say anything we just live our life true to ourselves um, then we are making a huge difference yeah. we truly are that is the number one way of um, inspiring others mm. how we live how we are not what we say not what we write and that is sometimes when i have a day if i feel frustrated oh it's not changing fast enough blah 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 so, but then I remind myself, okay, but just being me, you know, doing my own work and um, uh, then I'm actually making a huge difference. Mm. So true. Mm. Beautiful. And uh, <clears throat> how can people get in touch with you and work with you? I, I'm thinking about all these services that we talked about now during the podcast they can go to, I uh, have a website that's called earth.eu.com mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and there's a link to, uh, to be changed too. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's bechange.se. Mm -hmm. Great. I will yeah. share all of, all of the links in the show notes as well. And do you want to close off with anything? It's been so lovely to have a chat with you, Shireen. Thank and you. Uh, it's so nice to talk about this subject. It mm. makes my heart sing and it feels very meaningful for me to have this type of conversation. So uh, I'm very uh, grateful for that. And I just say, I just hope that um, everyone that listened got something useful out of it. Mm. Uh, and uh, and yeah, together we can really create the future that mm. we want. Yes. Thank you so much for taking your time. I'm sure so many will get inspired by this. And um, I'm excited to see the work that you're doing and, and uh, the changes that you're creating. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for listening today. I hope that this brings more clarity and also guidance when it comes to how to start living a more conscious and eco-friendly life and just understanding that it doesn't have to be a major life change that you have to do all at once. It, it can be done step by step and just the awareness around it is, is a, a good start. So. I really hope you enjoyed this and if you do want to get in touch with Anne, I have all of her links in the show notes and if you have any questions or feedback after the episode, I'm happy to, to connect with you. So let's take a deep breath in through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Thank you for listening and Namaste. Namaste.